Uh oh. Uh oh. Hey, did you see my recent video? I made a fax service that compiles C code for you. If that doesn't make sense, or you saw the video and it still didn't make sense, let me walk you through it. So, first of all, I have a sheet of paper in my hand, and printed on the paper is some C code. It's a program that outputs 10 lines of text. That's all it does. I take this sheet and place it on the scanning bed of this fax machine, and then I pick up this adorable little hamburger phone and dial 8. This connects me to the compiler fax service. Once I hear that the service has picked up and is making the tone to say it's ready to initiate a connection, I press the button on the fax machine to send my C code over to the compiler service. Fax, for all those lucky enough to have only ever used email, is essentially like email before email was a big thing. It's essentially just sending a bitmap image of a document that's been scanned to a printer that will print it. This happens over a phone line and is much slower than email. So, you can hear faintly in the background of the video the sounds of the fax being sent across the phone line. Eventually, the C compiler service has finished processing the document and is ready to fax me back the result. It calls me back on the number that I specified, the fax machine answers, accepts the fax, and prints it out. You're probably wondering, what does compiler fax actually look like? What is it? And how does it work? Can I make one for myself? Do I need a real phone line to be able to use it? What is the meaning of life? Why is the telephone number just 8? I also got some more questions on the other video too. I'll try to answer all these questions here. Easy first question, what does it look like? Here it is. It's a Raspberry Pi and a USB fax modem. Yeah, that's all there is to it. That is all you need. This is the whole system. Well, I suppose you also need a phone line to connect it to, but that much should be obvious. Once you have this, it's just a case of installing the right software. The source code for Compilerfax is on GitHub, link in the description. You can build yourself one of these if you want. I'll explain the software stack now, since that will clear up a lot of the questions that people had. The Raspberry Pi is running Raspbian, the default choice for a Raspberry Pi really. On top of that, I have installed Hylofax. Hylofax is, according to the website, an enterprise class system for sending and receiving facsimiles. I've found it to be a pain to configure, and so it certainly feels like enterprise class software. Insert air horn sound here. Hylofax handles the connection to the fax modem, accepts calls and receives faxes in a receive queue, and whenever the line is not busy, it attempts to transmit faxes from its outgoing fax queue. There's a program you can run to add a fax to the outgoing fax queue, so to make the C compiler part of this work, all I had to do was write a program that takes faxes from the incoming fax queue, processes them, and generates a report for each one, which gets added to the outgoing fax queue with the appropriate destination phone number. But how exactly does it process them? It needs to have a C source code file to be able to compile it, but all it has is a bitmap image of the received fax. Well, the problem of extracting text from images is a well-studied one, and we have readily available applications for doing just that. Tesseract is one such application. It does Optical Character Recognition, OCR. My Compilerfax program takes the incoming fax, does some transforms on it, because for some reason Hylofax provides me with a squashed version of the fax, then crops off a bit of the top and bottom, because fax machines often add headers and footers, and we don't want the text in them to be in the OCR output. Then it feeds that resulting image into Tesseract, and gets a text file out. Now, the user needs to make sure they put the return phone number in the program text somewhere. They can just add a comment with a line like this one. Compilerfax looks for this line to determine where to send the reply. If it can't find the line, then it's not able to reply, so it just ignores the fax and doesn't process it any further. If it does find it though, then it needs to compile and run the code, and generate a report to send back. This is the point at which lots of people say, Whoa, wait a minute, I just realised that this thing is going to run arbitrary C code sent to it by a random person with a fax machine. What if they send malicious code? An infinite loop? A fork bomb? What happens then? Ooh, those sound fun. Let me try. Let's start with an infinite loop that just prints the same line over and over again. Alright, here is an infinite loop.
Oh. That didn't work. Okay, now for a montage of all the OCR failures that I had before this actually worked. Let's send this to the compiler. Okay, that's not going to be there. What's that? Is that a dot? All right, let's try again. I got an I instead of a one. All right, let's try this instead. I have minimized the number of curly braces. And I've gone for while 3 instead of while 1, just so that it doesn't get misinterpreted as the letter I. Oh. It's busy. Oh. Yeah, I was testing it from my laptop. So it's busy replying to the laptop. I'll have to wait for that to finish. Okay. Now we should be good to go. Ah. All right. I'm cheating slightly. I'm sending this fax from my laptop using a USB fax modem because it seems to produce a fax that's easier to OCR, I guess. So it's gonna go from the laptop, but it's gonna come back to this fax machine. All right. Compilation successful. Program execution was terminated by timeout. Uh oh. Uh oh. There we go. If the report's too long, it just gets truncated to 10 pages. So there we go. That works. No problem at all. Okay, let's up the ante. You wanted a fork bomb? Let's try a fork bomb. All right, here we go. One fork bomb. Sending this to the C compiler. timed out. No output. While 14. Uh. Okay, that's not right. But it doesn't matter. It just timed out. So, fork bomb is fine. Not a problem. Okay, 
so clearly I put more thought into this than some people gave me credit for. I did make some mistakes though. One thing I didn't think about at first was, what if you tell it to reply to its own phone number? Well, initially this wasn't a problem, because it only uses a single phone line, so it would never be able to call itself because the line would be busy, and it would give up after a few attempts. But I was planning to take this to EMF camp and connect up two phone lines at once, so it could probably have dialed itself then. If it had done, then it would send the report to itself as a new fax, and if that report had the reply line in, which it likely would, then the next report would be the result of trying to compile the text of the report as C code. That would probably include the reply line, and thus it would send another fax, and then another, and another, and thus permanently have a fax circling around the incoming and outgoing fax queues. I added some logic to check if it's faxing itself, and then just not fax itself. This logic is not perfect, and is probably still exploitable on some phone systems where there's an optional prefix for the number, so watch out for that if you build one of these for yourself. I also recently discovered a bug that means it fails to reply when it should. If you generate enough output text, then you can cause a crash in the report generator code. It loads the whole output log into memory before it starts generating the report, and so if you generated enough output, then it would run out of memory and crash before it completed. It did eventually recover and continue handling faxes after the crash, but it would cause a bit of a delay and you'd never get the report for your program. I fixed this by limiting the log size to a sensible maximum. Anyway, how did I make it safe to compile and run random code including fork bombs? Well, I used PRLimit and a really powerful Linux utility called Unshare. Unshare creates new kernel namespaces temporarily to run a given program. It can also change the root directory at the same time, with the chroot system call. Namespaces in Linux are essentially separate contexts in which programs have access to a different set of resources. I used it to make sure that the compiler and the compiled program run without root access, without access to the network interfaces, without being able to communicate with other processes on the system, and they can only run inside a minimal Alpine root. The Alpine root only has a few select packages from Alpine. It has a minimal base set of packages, plus GCC for compilation. That's it, nothing more. The preparation of the report is done outside the sandbox by grabbing the output file from the sandbox. It also resets the sandbox in between runs. There's only one directory that is writable in the sandbox, so a reset is as simple as deleting and recreating that directory. So there's the whole software stack. Raspbian, Hylifax, Tesseract, a hint of image magic, a little bit of Alpine, and a bunch of glue code that I wrote to join it all together and generate factable compilation reports. All right, quick fire question and answer time. Question one, do you need a real phone line to be able to use this? No, in fact, the only way to use my instance of it right now is to turn up at York Hackspace and use the internal phone system. There's this PBX on the wall and it's only connected up to local phones and fax machines. No external connections at the moment. If you have your own PBX, then you can run this in your home too. If anyone knows of a cheap web host that also provides a phone number and a fax modem connected to your machine, let me know. I might make a publicly accessible compiler fax. Question two, why is the number just eight? Partly answered by the previous question, it's on a small private phone network in a hack space. There's only eight phone lines on it, so they're numbered one to eight. The fax machine I'm testing it with is on line seven. Question three, what if you need more than one page to send all your code? Multi-page faxes are not supported at the moment. Patches welcome. Question four. Is the sandbox actually secure? I've done the best I can to secure it, but there might still be issues. Try and break it for yourself, the code's all on GitHub. Question five, can you specify the compilation options? If so, how? No, unfortunately. I could maybe add in a way to do this, perhaps a special comment at the top of the file. For now though, it will always compile with this command, gcc-lm program.c-o program. So it does link in the maths library, but that's it. Otherwise, it needs to be a self-contained single file program that can be compiled with the default options. I hope that clears up all the questions people had, but please do feel free to ask more.